friends, it's Julie, and welcome to your strength and cardio interval workout. So today, we are gonna be working in intervals of strength and then cardio. For strength, we're gonna work for longer periods of time, and then cardio will shorten up that time period just a little bit. I am only gonna use one pair of weights for the entire workout. I'm gonna use eight pounds because we are gonna be working for long periods of time, and we're going for muscular endurance. I'm just gonna use a weight that's challenging, but that I can go for a long period of time. So we're not working for max strength here, we're working for muscular endurance. So choose anywhere between three to eight pounds for your weight, that would be perfect. And our cardio drills will just be no equipment. All you'll need is a little space around you. So are you ready to do this? Should I also mention there are no repeats? I know you guys love it when there's no repeats. So we're not gonna repeat any exercises today. Once we're done with that exercise, you're done with that exercise. And then we will finish at the end with a quick blast for the core. Are you ready to do this? Okay, we're gonna get warm and we're gonna jump into this. Here we go, shoulder rolls. We're gonna do a quick little warm up to make sure our body's ready for this. Make sure we reduce the risk of injury. And roll to the front. It's gonna be fast paced workout. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna get it and we're gonna get it done. And open and close, just right in front of you. Chest ready, get the back ready. And let's take this into some arm swings. So just up and then bring it back. Just work through that shoulder mobility. Awesome. Let's do some spinal rotations. Now we do have a little leg work mixed in here too. There are some squats and lunges. So I will give you alternate exercises for that time if you do not like to squat for lunch. Awesome, okay, let's put one leg behind us, so just step on back, push the heel towards the floor, and then just sort of hinge forward a little bit. Let's get that stretch in the back of the calf. So the more that you can kind of lean forward while pushing the heel towards the floor, the more you're gonna feel that in your calf, just that nice gentle tug where you're hitting that point of resistance stretching it out. Now what I want you to do is lift your heel and bend your knee and then straighten it back out. And again, and hold it and let's switch. Step back with that other foot, heel towards the floor and then just lean forward so you have a nice straight line all the way down. You should just feel, you should feel that gentle tension in the calf muscle as it kind of stretches out. It feels really good. Okay, let's lift the heel and bend the knee. In, straighten it back out. And hold it here and bring those feet together. Go ahead and turn the toes out. Bend the knees and come on down and just put your elbows inside your knees. Stretch out the inner thighs, open up the hips. If you can't go down that low, you can just put your hands on the inside of your thighs. Not the inside of your knees, but the inside of your thighs. This is a great stretch, in my opinion, for really stretching out the inner thighs, but also opening the hips. It can feel a little uncomfortable at first, but once you kind of relax a little bit, it can feel really, really good. And come right back up to the top, and let's just jog it out. A little bit of jog in place. Okay. Let me tell you how this is going to work. So we'll do one strength exercise followed by one cardio drill. So the strength, we're going to be lifting for 90 seconds. Yes, a minute and a half. So that's why I want you to choose a weight wisely because we've got a long lift period. Then we'll go straight into cardio, which will be for 45 seconds. That cardio, when we end at 45 seconds, you'll have 15 seconds to grab your weights again and we'll go right into the next exercise. You ready? Okay. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have very short rest periods. Just gonna burn it out, get it done. Okay, grab a quick sip of water. Let's be hydrated. Okay, grab it, go wait. Now I will tell you each exercise as it's getting ready to come up so that you'll know. They're very simple exercises. They're not gonna be complicated or anything like that. So don't worry about that. Ready? Okay, always making sure that in any of the lifting phases that we are in a neutral position. 
meaning that we have our weight distributed in the heels and the balls of our feet, but not our toes. So you shouldn't be pressing the big toes into the ground, but you should feel that pressure in your heels and then the balls of your feet right under the big toe and pinky toe, so that you're making a nice triangle there. Little bend to the knees, neutral pelvis. What I mean by that is this is not neutral. Okay, see how I've got my booty out and I've got an arch in my back? This is also not neutral, where you're tucking way under. Okay, we want that to be right in the middle, all right? So that our tailbone is actually pointed towards the floor, not tilting forward or back, yeah? Shoulders are always down, the chest is always open so that we're not, you know, here. That's not good posture. Okay, always standing up tall. All right, our first exercise is gonna just be standard overhead press, okay? Very basic, but you've got 90 seconds of it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go for 45 seconds just the standard press, and then the last 45 seconds we'll start going to alternating, okay? Are you ready for this? Let's go. Up. Now this is not a heavy weight for me. Okay, so typically with an overhead press, I would go like 22 and a half, maybe 25. But I'd only be able to get eight reps, maybe 10 reps. Here, we're gonna lift for a longer period of time and just go for some muscular endurance. Strike the shoulders, we're gonna keep that neck long so we're not bringing the shoulders towards the ears. Now in five more seconds, we're gonna to go to alternating. We're just gonna go one at a time. Ready, here we go. And alternate, and alternate. So one at a time. I'm already feeling it, okay? There's a little fire in my arms, a little burning. Big step touch, okay? Either way is great. Now, after we do the skaters, you'll have 15 seconds to rest and grab your weights again. We're not gonna rest between the strength to the cardio, but we will between the cardio to the strength. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Touching your shoulder. So I want you to think about the muscle. That the muscle's got to pull that weight up to the top. You can make an exercise a lot harder if you really think about what you're engaging. And 
really get that muscle recruitment going. Because we can go through the motions or we can do the motion. So let's really work it. We have five seconds, and then we're gonna go into power knees on just our right side. All right, put those down. Are you ready? Here we go, power knee right here. Just to this one side. We're not gonna switch sides. And I just want you to bring your knee up and meet your hands. Make sure you've got that core engaged. Now, your standing leg is holding all the weight. So it's gonna fatigue a little bit. But what I want you to do is make sure you've got that weight distributed between your heel and the balls of your feet, right? Woo! We got this. I'm feeling it in the standing leg, are you? We're almost there, we're close. And rest. You have 15 seconds. We're gonna go into back flies, okay? If you need to go down the lighter weight, that's okay. Back flies are a little more challenging. Okay, 45 seconds of them together, and then we'll alternate. Are you ready? Let's go. Back. So we're thinking of bringing the shoulder blades together without momentum in our body, like this. Okay, there should be no movement in the upper body. Control it on the way up, control it on the way down. So I don't want you to think of, okay, I'm gonna fling my arms open. See that, that's not control. What we wanna be thinking is using the back to pull these weights out and bring my shoulder blades together. In five seconds, we're gonna alternate. Here we go. One at a time. We can do this. Now our next cardio drill, we'll do the power knee to the other side. We can do this. got this. Hang in there. Give me some strong, powerful movements here. And rest. Ooh, did you feel it? Right there in that standing leg. You should feel it a little bit. Okay, we've got tricep kickbacks. So elbows up above the back, core is in, chest is open. Here we go. Kick back. We're here for 45 seconds. Then for 45 seconds, we'll do alternating. So I need those elbows up above the back, shoulders are down, chest is open, and I need a straight arm when we extend, no wrist flicking. And I'll show you what that means. This, that's flicking the wrist. Keep them straight. Almost to the point where we're going to alternate. Are you ready? Let's go. One at a time. There we go. Do 
And you really want to think about getting full extension right here. Oh, and really get the tricep. And rest. Woo. 15 seconds, what we're gonna do is grab our weights and we've got squats. If squatting doesn't feel good to you, I want you to hold that knee up, put it down, hold that knee up, put it down. Otherwise, we're squatting, here we go. Squat. Now you can hold your weights up like I am, or you can hold them down here by your side. You can hold them right here in front of you. All right, whatever you prefer. Now we kind of really want our elbows in the lead here, and we're just going to need a shoulder height. Get ready to start that alternating. Here we go, one at a time. Make 
So you've got control here, okay? We are lowering the weight, we're not dropping it. Now our next cardio drill is gonna be jacks. We're gonna do the low impact, or you can do a regular jack if you want. those elbows in. You got 10 more seconds. And we're going to go into a touchdown. So we're going to take our feet kind of wide. We're just going to touch the floor and stand up. And rest. Okay, put those down. Feet kind of wide. Here we go. Touch, reach. Touch, reach. That's where we are right here. Reach it high, go low. Keeping the chest still lifted though, I don't want you to be here, okay? So still look up at me. And we're gonna touch the floor because we're bending our legs. Now, if that's too much, you can be here. If touching the floor is a little too low, no problem, modify. Rest. Okay, we're going into bent over rows, so we're going to be here. Both arms. We can do this. Okay, are we ready? Abs are pulled in, chest is open, let's row. Row up, bring it back down. So we're pulling those elbows up above the back, and then we're going to come down. Pull them up, control them back down. And we want to think about bringing our elbows up above our back because we are using the lats. It's not an elbow exercise. It's a back exercise. So we want to engage and that will bring the elbows up. So from the side. So we're engaging and that brings the elbows up. Okay, are you ready? Let's alternate one at a time. 
Now, one thing I want to make sure is we're not here. Because, see, I, that's a whole rotation of my body. We don't want that. We want to keep that back stable. We're engaging those lats and we're pulling the arm up. Just like we're starting a lawnmower. We're going to go right into ghost roping. So jump roping with no jump rope. And it can just be just little heel kisses or little jumps. And put those weights down. Here we go. Jump, jump your rope. You got a little ghost rope going, so you're pretending to have a rope. Right here, my feet are not leaving the floor. I'm just really kissing the ground with my heels. Here, I'm a little bit leaving the floor, but keeping it light on the balls of my feet. Still really low impact. I'm not jumping high or hard. I want to keep this really light and springy. I like to call these little feet kisses because we're quickly tapping the ground. We're not like jamming our feet into the floor. Swing that rope. Keep it going. We're going to go into overhead tricep extensions next. And rest. Woo! Okay, 15 seconds. We're gonna bring our weight together. We're gonna do tricep extensions and then we'll do one at a time. This one's gonna be a little harder, so you know, just be aware. Here we go. Down and extend. Just a hinge at the elbow. And make sure you've got your elbows in so that you don't have chicken wings. And lower and lift. Five more seconds and we'll do one at a time. Here we go. One, extend. One, extend. Now this one to me is a little more challenging. So we gotta hold that one arm straight and stabilize it. So if you find that one at a time is too much, you can keep doing both of them together. You can drop one weight and just hold one weight and do them together. Make it work for you. Anybody else feeling it? Tell me I'm not alone. We're almost there. We're going to go into cross jabs. Oh, my goodness. And rest. Oh. Okay. Get your position. Here we go. Cross jab. Little pivot on the feet. And that's to protect your knees. What I want you to do though, pull the core in. The core is nice and tight. And we are using power and jabbing across. Across, across, okay? We're gonna get a little core work right here. We're gonna get our heart rate up using these arms. So give some power behind this, okay? No weak jabs here. I want all your strength behind these jabs. Okay, that's your other option. Otherwise, let's reverse lunge. Here we go. Now, we are already alternating for this. So, when we are done with our 45 seconds here, what we're gonna do is add a knee lift, just to make it a little more challenging. How are you doing? We're actually really close to being done. After this, we have one more cardio drill, and we're going to end with a little core. Okay, in five seconds, we're going to...
We're gonna add a knee lift when we come to the top. Here we go. And knee. And knee. And rest. Okay. Pony step. Here, here. Let's go. You can have your arms here. You can have them here. Whatever you want to do. This is our last cardio note. We're just going to pony step. And it's really just a little tri triple step. If that's too much, be here. Okay? This is a good modification. If you're like, um, my feet are not coordinated for that, that's okay. Or you can pick anything else you want to do. It's your last cardio drill. Let's have some fun with it. Woo, tripping over my feet. Five seconds, and we're going to finish with core. How are you feeling? I'm going to keep one weight for the core, but you can also do this with no weights. All right, we have a minute for these first few exercises, and then we'll finish the last one with these 30 seconds. We're going to do a crunch with a knee lift. I'm going to use my weight for added resistance, so I'm going to crunch and bring my knee in, okay? But you can also do that without the weight. All right? You got options. Are you ready? Let's do it. Crunch and down. Now, what I want you to think of is belly button pulled in towards the spine, and you're zipping the core up. So we want to pull the core together while we pull that belly button towards the spine. Back is against the floor and we are shortening the distance between our ribs and our hips. So I like to think bottom of my rib coming to meet the top of my hip bone and I'm crunching a can right in between. You're almost there. Then we're going to take this to heel taps. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to put that weight between my knees and we're just going to drop our toes, lift them up. Make sure the back stays against the floor. Here we go. Tap, come back up. So you do not have to do this with the weight. I just want to have that added resistance. So belly button is in and we're pulling that core together and we're controlling it as we lower our feet to gently kiss the floor and come back up. We're going to go into an oblique crunch with our knee next. So kind of like doing a modified bicycle crunch. Okay, so legs down and what we're going to do, and actually I'm going to drop my weight for this, is we're going to come elbow to knee and down. Here we go. This one's a little trickier to hold the weight into, so I'm just going to do it without the weight.
getting in there with me. We are gonna do a reverse crunch with a leg extension next. Okay, feet up. So you're gonna lift and extend. Lift your hips up and then extend, okay? Ready, here we go. Lift, footprints to the ceiling and extend. How low you extend is up to you, but I need you to keep your back to the floor. So if you find that your back is arching, then keep your extension higher, okay? going to go to side planks. I will not use my weight for that. So let me give you a little option here because we have a side plank with a hip dip. If side planks are already challenged for you, you can just hold the side plank or you can keep the bottom knee bent and you're here. Okay. Lifting up. Otherwise you're going to be all the way up. Okay. We can do this. So grab a good position and make sure that your shoulder is on top of your elbow so that it's not way out to the side. You want to be nicely stacked, okay? We have 30 seconds each side. Here we go. Down, lift it up. Down, lift it up. Now you can bend that bottom leg but make sure you're still lifting and really pulling, pulling, pulling back to the top, okay? And rest, okay. Come around to the other side. I, okay, so here's the thing. I like my feet staggered. You can put them on top of each other if you want. This to me gives me more balance. I tend to roll a little bit if I stack my feet. Either way is good. Okay, ready? Here we go. Down and up. And that's a great question. I actually got that not too long ago. Is there a benefit to stacking your feet versus staggering? Not really. You're still working your core the same. So it's just what's comfortable for you. I just don't like my feet stacked because I tend to lose my balance. Like I break form too much. So for me, just slightly staggered and I stay with my hips stacked and it's just better for me. But either way, you're working your core. And rest. We're done. <laughs> We're done, friends. How good do you feel? Okay, put your feet out in front of you. Sit up nice and tall. Take one leg and bend it, and then cross it over, okay? Now, I want you to take the outside arm and put the tricep inside your knee, and then you're gonna do a slight twist we're going to do spinal stretch here. Let go of any tension. Let's switch. So straighten the legs back out. Bend the other leg. Place it over so you're crossing. Bring that arm around. And you just want the tricep inside your thigh, knee area. And then just a little twist. This feels really good for the back, but also the outside of the hip. Awesome. Come back and put your feet together and then drop your knees open so you're sitting in a butterfly. Let's just open that up a little bit, open the hips. 
If you want to bring your chest forward and deepen that a little bit, feel free to do that. This is actually a great position to sit in for just opening the hips. It can be a little uncomfortable at first if you really lack mobility in your hips, but this is a great way to work on that. And you can just kind of like gently push your knee down a little bit and just stretch out the top of the leg here into your inner thigh. But if you struggle with like really tight hips, I find this stretch to be really helpful because it just forces you to open up your hips. Same with um, happy baby is a great one where you lay on your back and bring your feet in. We're gonna do a different one that is not anybody's favorite, but it's really great. Okay, come up to your hands and knees. Okay, so you're on your hands and knees. Take your knees apart wider than your hips, okay? Wider than your hips. And then make sure that your feet come out at like 90 degrees from there, okay? Already, this is weird, right? If it hurts the inside of your knees, you can roll up towels and put them underneath. Then you're just gonna come down to your elbows and sit here. It's not the prettiest stretch, I will give you that. Um, but this is great for opening up the inner thighs and the hips. And you have to sometimes make adjustments. This is what is ideal. On your own time, like especially if you're on carpet or something, because then like it doesn't hurt the inside of your knees at all, is you sit here, okay? You want to pull the core in and you want to make sure you are not tensing your inner thighs or trying to grip the floor with your knees. If you relax that and release that, no matter how far down you can go, it doesn't matter. We're all at different positions. You just hold it. But the biggest thing is, is you have to let go of muscle tension. And I've said this in many workouts. Oftentimes we will tense them up as a protective mechanism, but I need you to actually concentrate on releasing them because the more you do, the better this feels. And actually, the longer you sit here and hold it, the more you'll feel your knees want to slide out a little more and they want to go a little deeper in the stretch. So like right now, I'm going to push mine out just a little bit more. It feels really good. Um, the longer you can hold it, you know, the better. If you can hold it for like 90 seconds, that's awesome. You can work out from there if you want, but it's really, it's a really great stretch for just opening up the hips, stretching the inner thighs. Um, it's just, it's fantastic. But I grant you, it, it's awkward at first, and when you don't have much flexibility, it feels really, really uncomfortable. But the more you do it, the easier it gets and the better it feels. So this is a great yoga stretch. Okay, we're gonna come out of that. We can't be here all day. We got stuff to do. Bring those knees in. Okay, we're gonna cat-cow here. So roll it up, arch, 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 and release it. And arch, arch, arch. And release it one more time. Roll it up. And release it. Go ahead and push your feet down to the floor into a down dog. So we're just gonna push those heels down, hold the tailbone up towards the sky. Now I want you to walk your feet toward your hands as best as you can. And then you're gonna slowly roll up. You're done. If you need a deeper stretch, go check out my Stretch and Flexibility playlist. I've got a bunch of stretching workouts on there that you can do at any time to just stretch your body. It's a great way to recover, especially after a hard week of workouts when your muscles are kind of sore and they just feel very fatigued. Stretching is a great way to recover. I always take one day a week, Sunday for me, and that's my recovery day. I still move through the stretching, but I'm letting my muscles elongate, recover, and get ready for the next week workouts. So just know that that playlist is there anytime you just want to do a stretch to just really focus in on recovery for the muscles or do some yoga, go on a walk, do stretching on your own, anything like that. So thank you for joining me today. I hope that you had fun and I'll see you in the next workout. Bye.